Yes. And a very happy August 2nd. That's the date of recording. Welcome to the QCast Season 2, Episode 22. And this is a big uh, guest because it, it brings him into a tie for the lead on the most QCast appearances ever. I mean, Coach Ron Rose, Mike Shower at four appearances is the leader. Now, he get he got, he got a lot of those because he was the National Committee guy, right? But this now brings you up to a tie. You were the first ever guest on the QCast. Can I, you believe I, the heights that this thing has gone to? Can you believe what the QCast has turned into? I expected it, Q. You know, I, I never doubted that that first time when I was on – I, I, I predicted to everyone around, this is going to be a big deal. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and to be on now with, you know, with Mike Showers is the most, what an honor. What an honor. Coach so. Rose and Coach Shower battling again right there, neck and neck for the title. <laughs> so, uh, Ron, thanks so much for taking the time. Again, we're we're in the middle of the summer here, but the reason I wanted to, to have Jan in particular is to talk about this trip to Greece that that you're about to embark on it what a unique opportunity in, in your program every four years i believe you, yeah, actually every three every three years you get to take a trip and you do take a trip can you talk about ron just the overall why do you take these trips and uh, and, and how do they contribute to your program yeah so th this will be our fifth trip you're allowed to take them every three years. Incoming freshmen are not allowed to participate because they haven't been in class, uh, officially enrolled in, in a class and taking classes. So it is sophomores, juniors, seniors, incoming that, that have participated. And, you know, it, it is something, I guess, it, 15 years ago, the first first time we, we did it, um, you know, it, it, it was starting to be a little bit of a trend. You saw a lot of the Division ones doing it. And what a unique opportunity. Uh, that first trip, I had never been overseas. And most of our players have never been overseas and experienced a different culture, um, a different part of the world. Um, it, it's an incredible education. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're doing this week is we give uh, our guys that are going each have a topic and have to present on it. So yesterday, Lucas Heflin presented an overview on Greece and its history. Uh, Cody Mitchell's got uh, Gre uh, what is Greece known for business-wise? What are we going to experience food-wise? So everybody has something different. And it, what, what, a, what a cool thing. It adds to a light layer of interest to learn about this and uh, appreciate the culture and just experience. And then, and then uh, you know, you get former players back. And when you're talking to them, uh, it always comes up. Our goal within our program is to give our guys as, as positive and good of experience as they can as being part of the basketball program. And, and this, is one, this is one of the things that we do to really uh, provide a, a unique, special experience for our guys. And then the side note is certainly the, the added practice that we're doing right now, the additional games that you get to play over there. There's a, a basketball component that is very important, not to even talk about just the camaraderie and the friendships that are even strengthened when you get to do something like this. Yeah, talk about the practice side of it, if, if you would, because you usually you, you start practicing sometime in October for the season, but this is, this is a freebie. This is getting the guys back to campus in August. You get to practice with the team. You get to play games with the team and uh it's got to be just a huge advantage in seasons where you, you get to do this can you talk about that side of it ron well it goes there's a lot of advantages you know in preparation for the trip the guys are working out all summer long with a, a you know sometimes the season feels like it's a long ways away well when you know you're coming in august 1st and Coach Rose is telling you, you better be ready to go because we're going to practice practice. We're not going to ease into this thing. We're going to we're going to assume it's October 15th and we're going to really get after it and utilize this time. You know, I, I you know, in June and July, guys are in the weight room. They're running. They're on the court, getting themselves ready uh, physically and basketball wise for these practices. So even leading up to it, there's an advantage because that that motivation is there all summer long. 
And now we've got, uh, you're allowed 10 days. We're taking nine days to practice. Uh, typically what we do is we let our guys uh, work through June, July. A lot of them have internships. Then we start practice August 1st. To this year, we were able to move it up because July, at the end of July, was over a weekend. And then uh, we practice eight, nine days. And then, then we go on our trip, which leads to right the beginning of school, about a week before school starts. But the practice, it, it allows you to, to kind of start forming your team, the leadership within your team, uh, getting a, a, for us, it gives us a feel for what could we be good at? What are we going to want to emphasize when, and it gives you chances to experiment. I mean, we're trying a few different things that, that we think will be good for this group. Um, and it gives us a chance to see it live. Uh, and then we'll be able to evaluate it. So you're not wasting valuable practice time, getting ready for the real thing. And then the games, I mean, what a neat experience for our players to get to play international basketball. Uh, you know, international rules. Evan Schneider was, he wanted to know, hey, when it hits the rim, can I goal it? Can I go up and get it? You know, that's goaltending here. I said, Evan, if you can do that, big boy, go get it. <laughs> and uh, so, but uh, it, it's a fun experience playing the international teams. Uh, we, we've always uh, tried to get, you know, when we talk to the people that kind of organize a trip, let, give us the best competition that we can. We want to play good people, hopefully pros. Um, and then, and then just that game experience, getting out there. And it also gives me a chance, you know, everyone's going to play. I don't, I don't, I sub different, you know, I might make giving everybody that opportunity to get on the floor, but it gives us a chance to see guys uh, get on the floor and play. And so there's, there's a lot of advantages basketball wise, but, but uh, you know, I kind of how I've always viewed it is the practice there's the real basketball value. The trip is the trip. We're not on game day Q. We're not resting their legs. We're not worried about, Hey, right. You know, we, we're getting out. And, and when we go, we see, I mean, our schedule is packed and we want to see as much as we can. I've never been to Greece. I don't know if anybody on our trip has been to Greece. So we're going to see as much of it and experience it as much as possible. And if we have a little dead legs, we'll, we'll that, these don't count, right? No, no one's going to, I, you can't tell me what our record is over our previous four trips and overseas, but it has helped us once the season starts. You know, I always, I always look at the tweets that come out around these trips when the guys, we haven't seen the guys in several months. I haven't. And then I start to get pictures on Twitter and, you know, a lot of people, a lot of fans are looking at this like, Oh, there's the Titans. What I'm looking at is who has lifted Waits and Ron, there's a photo of number 45, my guy, Evan Schneider. I'm telling you what, this kid, it looks like a beast. I thought you were trying to back him off the weights a little bit. He he, he didn't listen. What, what is going on with this kid? Well, yeah, you, we talked about that. I mean, Evan, uh, you know, chews weights for breakfast. I mean, he loves the weight room. And his freshman year, I said, more shooting, less lifting. I mean, he was just... And, and he is actually trimmed up, but the kid has no body fat to him. And he's, he's a fitness fanatic. You know, he really watches what he eats and, but he's done all the right stuff. I mean, he's, he's gotten in the weight room, but he's also very lean and yeah, he's, he looks great. He's had a, he came in to practice and, and he was ready, raring to go for sure. As, Another, as, as, as is most of them. That's what I was going to say is another guy I look at that looks like a different person is, is Harrison Wilmson. When I look at him being a, he was never a skinny freshman. He, he was always pretty physically developed, but I mean, if you look at that kid's shoulders and arms and he's clearly been on the weights is, I mean, you've had a, a culture here thinking how big Charlie bear got and how big Pete Lambesis got and Matt Laird's you've got a really good culture of guys getting after it and improving yeah. their, their body to compete. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it's fed into this group? Well, you know, as you think of like last year's team, uh, I think early on we said, you know, that's, it's really a physically fit team and it has been the last few years. And, and uh, um, you know, I, I remember John Mays who came in and, and really shared a little bit of the, the strength and conditioning philosophy of Kansas at the time is where he came from. And uh, his dad is his, his father-in-law being Brock Spack, the football coach at ISU. He really helped change a little bit of the culture in that. And, and you've seen it 
over the last five or six years, guys really embracing uh, the strength and conditioning program. It, it's the strength, but also uh, what guys eat, how they condition, how they take care of themselves, much better than the 80s and 90s, Q. I guarantee you that. Um, but they, uh, it, it is it is a culture thing. I mean, I think the young guys come in and, and learn very quickly if they're going to compete. They, they are going to have to embrace getting stronger. And you've got, you got exhibit A, B, C, and D on our team of guys that have changed their bodies and their games have uh, improved dramatically as a result. Yeah, during the pandemic, uh, they released some tapes, uh, some old school Titan tapes, and I remember watching some some 1987-88 games. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, Coach Rose, that Paul Peterson didn't look like these guys, and Ron Rose didn't, and 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 Mark Edmondson didn't, and and Brian Coderre, whoever else was on those tapes, Ron, they didn't look like like Cody Mitchell does. Correct. Well, they're, they're, the short shorts and tight shorts are made it a little deceptive, Q. I mean, I, <laughs> no, you know, we, we didn't lift. We didn't lift. I, I, man, leg day, I was skipping leg day, man. It was, uh, that wasn't a thing back then. And now to compete, um, you have to. And, and the, the difference is, you know, we didn't grow up lifting. You know, when I, when I, in, when I was in high school, that wasn't part of it. We played a ton of basketball. We were in the parks, on the driveways. We played a, a, a lot of basketball, but we didn't spend any time in the weight room. These guys come in, and they have been lifting in high school. They've had trainers. It is kind of an expectation, and I think you see it at all levels of basketball. Just uh, basketball players now are bigger, stronger, more athletic. It shows in the NBA and at every level. Guys are just better conditioned athletes than they were 10, 20 years ago. It's a whole new, whole new day. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you've got 13 guys that are going on this trip. You, you generally have most of your returning guys that are going on the trip. You have a couple that, that aren't able to go for different reasons. And um, you've got a traveling party of 34 people, which would include coaches and parents and family. Pretty cool for the traveling party to get to be part of this too. Talk about what, what that group of, of folks does on the trip and how they contribute to it. Yeah, you, we've always opened it up to, to family and friends. And uh, it's a basketball trip, but that's kind of a philosophy of our program is that we want our program, you know, everyone says it, that you want that family atmosphere. And, um, and, and a lot of programs succeed in that. But that is one of the things that we want to really strive for is that, um, you know, I, I think when you look at it, the parents really support the team. They support the players, they get to know each other. Uh, you know, it was a Coach Bridges thing after games. Our, our guys, we don't go in the locker room and meet. Our guys are out on the floor and they're mingling with each other, with each other's families. There's a connection there. Um, and, and so this is part of it, you know, and, and so anybody who wants to go, goes. Now the parents, you know, the players, we have a, a pretty tight itinerary. And the players, we're on that. The, parent, the, uh, the parents that go certainly are welcome to do anything, and they do most of it, but they have a little bit more freedom to go explore and do other things. And it makes for a really a, a, a cool experience having that many people. I'll be honest, having a few extra chaperones isn't always a bad thing either. But, <laughs> and, you know, I've always said this, at, at some point I have to sleep. And uh, these, these guys, um, you know, that, that's the, the concern of going on these trips is, is – uh, making sure that everybody follows the, the team rules in terms of how we're going to approach things. And you're in a foreign country, you know, we're not in Bloomington normal anymore. And that's kind of a cool uh, learning experience as well. And our guys, you, you know, uh, personally and very well, um, I would be nervous if they weren't the type of young men that we have in the program. I trust them, but uh, they do have more energy than I do. You know, I'm sure you've got a curfew for these guys, and and, and I'll, I'll tell you a real quick st uh, story on one of your predecessors. I was at Schooners after a basketball game sometime in the 90s, and uh, an opposing CCW team had one of their best players miss the game because he missed curfew on a holiday trip and uh, was sitting at a table with Coach Bridges. Titans won the game in, in part because this other guy didn't play probably, and someone asked, Coach Bridges, what he what he thought about that? And Coach Bridges said, you know, 
if you don't have a curfew, they, the guy can't break the curfew. <laughs> and that's all he said. But I remember to this day, I'll never forget that. So I know Coach Rose is probably a little more curfew oriented, but I'm just giving you the other side of the equation. Yeah. Well, it's a little easier to do that in the 80s, early 90s, I think, than, than today is in, in a foreign country. So that is, that, is, that is funny. I can see Coach saying that. Yeah, that's exactly. He didn't crack. He just said, you know, if you don't have a curfew, no one can break a curfew. And then he just kept, <laughs> eat, he kept eating his hamburger. So that was, I always never forgot about that. Um, interestingly, one of, one of the, the organizers of this is our old friend, coach Gray Giovanni, correct? So coach G, I think he works for world strides is the name. So what is, tell everyone the connection between this trip and the guy that used to throw his sport coat on the sideline at the Carver center. What is the connection with our friend coach G? So we've gone with different people over the years. And, and, and they've all done a really good job. The last trip we went on was a guy, Tim Whittle, who was a head coach at McAllister and longtime assistant at Wash U that, that I became friends with. And he was working for a, a, a company. Uh, and so we went with, with Tim and they did a phenomenal job. Weren't able to uh, uh, use them for this trip. Uh, and then we went on with a, a different company before that, that several of our other teams, our women's soccer team. And, you know, you want to make sure that it's a reputable company and they're going to do things right. So Coach G and I have a long history. Uh, he recruited me and I, I was, I, I played for him at Valparaiso before transferring to Illinois Wesleyan. We coached together on the same staff at Wichita State. Uh, then obviously it got a little murky there, right? <laughs> when you got the Wesleyan Augie rivalry still remain friends, but, but it pretty intense rivalry. And, um, uh, so, but he and I have, have stayed in contact over the years. Uh, you know, it's funny when, when he retired, I said, Hey, we can be friends again. <laughs> you know, now, right. that, now that we're not battling for that CCIW championship. And so he, upon his retirement, started working for world strides, working directly with college basketball programs, to go overseas. And so he's actually headed with St. Louis university to, for France this week. He went with Augie earlier to Greece, right. uh, which, which I love because he's been over there and we've been able to kind of draw from that experience a little bit in preparation. And so it is really nice that you have someone that you have a relationship with as you're organizing these things and can go directly to that you trust. So yeah, people, I, last year when we were organizing it, he actually, you know, he goes around and meets with a lot of programs. He came into one of our practices. I don't know if our guys knew what to think about it. <laughs> and so I didn't, I didn't run any of our stuff when he was there. I didn't want to get back. Uh, no, but yeah, cause he recruited a lot of those guys. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is uh, certainly a unique thing that yeah, a lot of people don't know what to think about it. I saw Coach G at Fort Wayne. He was at the Final Four, and he was the first person I saw when I walked in um, the Coliseum there, the arena, and uh, I said hi to him. And, and and all of a sudden, a second later, I was getting the grease pitch. Like, by the time we got up, the, we rode an escalator. By the time we got up the escalator, I was sold, man. I was in. I was going to call Rosemary and say, we're going to Greece. And I was like, now I know like why Hunter Hill and Nolan Ebel ended up there because I just got recruited and basically gave him a verbal commitment. <laughs> it kind of fell through late. We're redoing our kitchen, Coach Rose. And so I lost out on the grease trip over some money here. You know, we're doing a kitchen. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be getting on the plane too. Well, I mean, three I years. Have... <laughs> three years. Well, no one, anyone who knows Coach G knows he can sell it. And, and he's done exceptionally well in this job and, and, and certainly well. Yeah, I was I was committed. Um personnel wise let's just you know we i don't want to pin you down here to starting lineups and this and that because you don't know how this is going to play out but certainly great timing and that you lost so much from you lost four starters you lost matt laritz Corey no luke yoder pete lambesis um in addition to gavin markgraf so we obviously you you've got a club here that is very very new now you you also though you probably have more experience coming back than people think about. I mean, you've got Cody Mitchell, you got Ryan Soroka, you have Lucas Heflin, you have Nick Roper, you have Harrison Wilmson, 
you have Grant Hardy and a few others that got in there, right? So how do you look at this from a standpoint of piecing 22, 23 together yeah. with who you lost? And now how do you use this trip to figure out your new pieces and just talk a little bit about your personnel and how you're looking at that? Well, we you're right. Four important guys that had great seasons last year that gobbled up a lot of minutes, a lot of production out of those four guys. And uh, you, but you're right. You listed five or six guys that did get valuable minutes, valuable experience last year, which I hope creates some momentum going into this trip and this season. And then we have others that that are have been working hard that are waiting for that opportunity to show what they can do. Um, you know, for this trip, one of the things that we're doing in practice is it's really a versatile group. Uh, we've got guys that, that literally play the one through four. And, and we want to try to become, or we're experimenting, becoming more interchangeable. Uh, you know, like last year, Matt Laird was the five. Luke Yoder was the one. Corey No was the two. For example, they they were very defined roles in terms of that. I think this 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 team has the potential to be very interchangeable. That we can have multiple guys play the one through. You know, Cody Mitchell shoot. He played some five for us late. Uh, he was our starting four, and we know he's got some ability to slide over to the three. And so we're kind of just trying to get guys comfortable in all those positions, see where they look most comfortable, what they're capable of doing. So that's one of the things that we're really experimenting with. We're not looking to get a, hey, who's our starting five? We're not looking to develop a rotation. We're, we're going to try to, the 12 guys that are going to play, they're all going to play. And, and we're going to play them in all different positions and all different combinations. And we are going to compete in these games to win. You're going to play them to win. But I'm not going to sub or strategize to win necessarily. I'm going to do those things to learn about our team and figure some things out there. Let me just ask you about a, a couple guys in particular. And th there's some returners that I think people are really familiar with. And I'm not looking to, to mention every guy in the team. We're just There's a couple guys that I believe are intriguing guys heading into the season. Could be really, really good players for you. Um Connor Heaton's a guy that's kind of waited his turn here, really highly recruited kid, right out of Central A&M High School. He's, he's been behind some guys. He's gotten on the floor a little bit for sure. Yeah. But 6'5", 2'3", really athletic kid. What are you seeing kind of in this early practice session? What are your thoughts heading to the trip on, on what you're looking for from Connor Heaton? Yeah, you know, Connor, he's really – progressed and improved you know his freshman year he didn't come first semester he only came second semester so it, that's a little deceptive he, he's been here but he was really yeah. behind the eight ball in terms of learning the yeah. system and good point and the last year really was his first season where he had a chance to and, and he got some in my opinion valuable experience he's another versatile guy you know we're looking at him one through three and I think he's he just needs to get out on the floor and play some and, and really figure out uh, what he's really good at at this level and how he can contribute. But I'll tell you this. I mean, when, when, when you talk about guys that have put in time and worked on their bodies and, um, you know, he's right at the top of that list. And so this is, this is uh, an example of, like you said, a great opportunity now to get extra practice time in and then get on the court and play. You right. know, and, and it gives guys a chance a little bit, you know, he, guys that were, you know, he was right on that fringe of getting in the rotation last year. Sometimes when you're in that position, it's a lot, there's a lot of pressure to those guys because you don't want to go in and mess up. Right. And so your job is to go in there and not mess up and keep things going. And, and this will give them a chance to kind of go out and just play. And a, a great testament to the program that you've got a kid that talented that's kind of had to wait his time and, and play some JV and, and get, you know, minutes here and there. And now, you know, gets a chance to compete for, for an important role on, on the varsity team. Great Testament to the program. Another guy last year that I saw flashes from, and boy, I thought to myself, boy, he's going to be really good is Nick Roper. Um, I think Nick's listed at six, seven. 
I think he's six eight. He seems to me like he was an inch taller than Matt Larratt. Um, Nick Roper is a is is a guard. He's not a he's not a low post guy. He is truly a six seven or six eight division three guard that can handle it, can shoot it, can get to the lane. Um, what are you looking for out of Nick Roper? Well, you're right. He's more more six eight and long and athletic. He moves like a, a five ten guy. I mean the way he he gets going, um, and he's he's really grown in his game. Um, he, he's Another one that, you know, as he gets on the floor more and gets to play through mistakes and gets more aggressive. And, and he's one that this, you know, he's, he's really slender, came in. I don't know what he's put on. He's put on 10 to 20 pounds yeah. of muscle. You could tell and that in photos, yeah. It, it, part of that's just the maturity of, you know, coming in as an 18-year-old and now you're, you're 19, going on 20. And, but he's done the work, too. He and Harrison worked out together down in St. Louis this summer and um, did a terrific job. I mean, they got after it. And he's one, quite honestly, um, he's one of those guys that when I said guys can play one through four, he can play one through four. Right. I mean, he can handle the ball well enough to to get you into an offense. And at 6'8", certainly is a mismatch. So we're trying to figure out, and he's trying to figure out at this level, how do you really utilize the guy with that unique skill set. There are not a lot of guys at our level that are six, eight that move and have the skill set he does. And he's just going to keep getting better. Right. I mean, that's, he's just going to continue to improve, but this, this kind of helps expedite some of that improvement. This experience that he's getting right now. You talk about these guys physically are maturing coach Rose. I remember, you know, I came to Wesleyan. I was a 17 year old kid until November of that freshman year. I was 17. I went home the summer after freshman year. And I was 6'3", 145. And I remember my goal being to somehow gain like 20 pounds. Can you imagine now, Coach Rose, at age 50, you're a couple of years older. Can you imagine having a goal over the summer of gaining 20 pounds? <laughs> no. Well, I, I think we probably both could do it if we <laughs> wanted to. I could have that done in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you... I, I love the 145, 6'3". <laughs> 145. Apparently you didn't get on the weights much in high school either, Q. Yeah, I, I, I was not on the weights. I was a I was a tall, lanky first baseman coach. It, it, you'll laugh at this, Coach Rose. So there's a little sidebar. So when I started my senior year of high school, I was 5'4", 145. <laughs> okay. When I graduated nine months later, I was 6'3", 145. How about oh, that? Oh <laughs> my goodness. I would say you were a late bloomer. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Does Rose say that? Is she still waiting for the? Yeah, she's waiting for that late maturity. They think she is. In? Yeah. So, <laughs> not to go down the side road, but yeah, some of these guys that are a little thinner that are now working to put on weight. I mean, I'm just saying, I feel their pain. Um, and then the last guy, <laughs> um, that again, just someone, kind of a newer guy, maybe but didn't see him a ton. Harrison Wilmson, he was in your varsity rotation, the the second half of last year at least. He mm -hmm. had some really important minutes. I want to say there was, was it a, was one of the NCAA tournament games or a big game late where he had to play a ton because Matt Laritz was in foul trouble. Yeah. Six, nine skilled. Talk about kind of what you're seeing and expecting from Harrison Wilson. Well, you've seen over the years, we, we don't like our, you know, we don't put our five men and just stick them on the block. Um, you know, we, we like him to pop out, you know, Matt shot a lot of threes and we get him in and out and he, he's, it, it's right within his wheelhouse because, um, he's physically gifted. Again, he's another guy that is just physically, you don't see a lot of guys, uh, like him at our level. Not only is he six, nine, but he's put together, he can move. Uh, and then he is skilled. He can step out and shoot it. We're going to utilize that. It, his, he's got a really a pretty three-point shot. Uh, he's big and strong. He's gotten even better on the low block. Uh, and what I love is, you know, I always joked about Matt Larris being a seeker. I mean, he, in terms of contact, so is Harrison. And Harrison will get be physical. He can move his feet. Um, he's going to be a great player for us. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, he's, he's going to be someone that Titan fans are going to enjoy watching. So those are just three guys, you Titan fans that, you know, you should look out for this year. There's many others. 
you know, uh, unfortunately, the guys that are returners, they, they fall in the category of like, hey, you, we know you, you're established, you know, Cody, Ryan, Lucas, you guys, you know, sorry, I didn't just feature you, but the fans like the new guys, the new shiny object. That's how this goes. <laughs> but you really do have an incredible cast. I'm looking forward to seeing, again, this Evan Schneider kid, man. I'm telling you, he's a strong beast of a kid that's very skilled. He could do some damage for you. Um just as we start to, to wrap up, Ron, I want to ask you about your schedule. Your schedule was released in the last 30 days, maybe a little longer than that. You've uh, you've gone out of your way to cause problems for yourself again this year. I mean, I was looking at November. November. November is something like Yeshiva, Stevens Pointer Webster, Nebraska Wesleyan, St. Joe of Connecticut, Oshkosh, Elmhurst? I mean... That's just November. And then, and and then Tom's. Yeah, and then Bastin December. Tums, like, man. Yeah, yeah, there's Wash U in there. There's the, all the other seats. Like, um, you got to be pretty excited about another slate like that because I know the guys love it. Well, you and I have talked about this, and, and it goes back to trying to run the best program you can and give your guys the best experience they can. You know, we, we could schedule to try to go 9 and 0 in the non conference. Um, I, I would rather really challenge our guys. Our guys want to play good competition. Um, now, we, we, you know, sometimes I wonder, did I go overboard? I mean, there's not an easy game, not a single uh, easy game or, or a lesser opponent. I mean, they're all elite teams. And, and if there was a year where you're less experienced, you'd think, well, hey, maybe this year. But you know what? Um, it goes back to – the experience to go out and play in the Champions Classic against Nebraska Wesleyan and St. Joseph, what a great experience. Chance to go out to Portland and, and play two really – you know, we always play Chicago and, and Wash U every year. Uh, the Sigma tournament has added a yeah. whole different dynamic to our schedule because we're going to get two great games in there. So we always want to try to schedule the best – possible competition that we can it is what our players want it's when we go out recruiting um that that we, we you hey you're gonna we're gonna get you to play great competition that's what they want and so it, it's just a program philosophy let, let, let's really challenge ourselves let's play the best schedule we can and i think we accomplished it this year yeah you, <laughs> it, you, you, it's, it, it's an exciting schedule but it's going to be challenging we're going to have to be ready to go you sure did. And the Titans will open and we'll have a full season preview. We'll do that in October like we usually do. But November 12th against our good friends at Yeshiva. And you've it's quite an opener. You have to deal with that motion offense. You've, you've got this new nucleus that you're trying to figure out. And you come out of the gates against one of the <laughs> tougher offenses to guard in Division Three. That That's kind of a tough draw, isn't it, Coach Rose? It, it, again, no one ever said I was smart. All right, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm optimistic, uh, I'm enthusiastic, smart may not be part of it, but yeah, what a great, what a great opener though. Uh, and, and the relationship and, and you, you know, you, you've had so much to do with cultivating that friendship between the two programs and we have so much respect for them, but hopefully we can be as great a host as they were for us when we went out to, to New York, but looking forward to that challenge. And, um, and yeah, and then, then you've got Webster and Stevens point, the second game. Yeah. And in the Sigma thing, what, what, a, what, a, you know, I want to thank, you know, Jack Sigma for letting us put his name on that and uh, let us kind of host really an elite small college tournament early in the season. There'll be just a ton of excitement surrounding it, that. It again. will be a great atmosphere. We'll talk about another, another show, but I've heard, early indications of some really cool plans to bring some former Titans back. Um, Bob Spear gave me a verbal commitment, you know, or on Twitter. So a written commitment from Bob Spear. So he's going to be back again. I'm waiting to get the final confirmation from the namesake of the tournament. I sure hope he's, you know, big Jack's rolling in again. Will be a special tournament and more to come on that. So, Ron, tell us when you leave. When 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 are the wheels up for uh, for Greece? So we'll we'll practice through August seventh. We take August eighth off. Guys can go home 
do laundry, pack, and then we fly out August 9th. And then I believe we play August 10th or 11th is our first game. Um, you know, it, you, you get down, first thing we do is we go practice, try to get through the jet lag. Uh, and then I, I think that first day we're there, after the, the second day we're there, we're playing. And uh, so yeah, it'll be it'll be an amazing experience. You know, in today's world, if, if the flight goes, if the luggage shows up, uh, the rest of it will take care of itself. Those are the two things that hopefully will will all go smoothly. I'll have to find. I'll have to get the list of the traveling party. You know, last the last trip, I think it was was Italy. The last trip was Italy three years ago. Italy was, yeah. I had some highly placed sources, so I, I'm getting real time scores. You know, on the fly, Titans are up twelve to ten. I'm gonna have to find who my sources are on this trip. And, yeah, we're uh, gonna miss Brian Coderre. I don't know if Brian Coderre was your source, but but if there was ever but anyone you wanted to travel with and have fun with, <laughs> Brian Coderre was the guy. So if you're watching BC. We're gonna miss you in Greece, but uh, it, it is it'll yeah the, the parents really enjoy it. It's it's such a cool experience and and you know again the stories that come back and the friendships that are forged. How would you like to at, at 20 years old go to Greece with some of your best friends and play against a top Incredible. club and professional teams? Incredible experience. So very blessed. And fortunate to get to do this and thankful that that our athletic director mike wagner is in full support of it and looking forward to a wonderful time what what season will this be for coach rose are we going into season 17 or 16 17, 17 that's unbelievable wow it is 16 in the books heading into number 17 well and i'll give you the last word here ron i'll just say the program couldn't be in any better shape you're coming off an elite eight season a CCIW championship even after losing a bunch of guys you know that were critical coming into this season feeling like boy there's a lot of talent to be extremely good this year I can't think of a better measure of the program and the ability to take a trip like this and give the guys that experience and um Hey, as a fan, I just feel like the program is just in as good a shape as it could possibly be. I'll give you the last words for the QCast listeners as everyone's excited about this Greece trip. Well, thanks, Q. I, I appreciate that. And it is an exciting time in our program. You know, it's 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 fun having now have 16 seasons under my belt because there's 16 teams and uh, so many play, former players now that it's just it, – it, Titan basketball, it's just such a fun thing to be a part of because of all the friendships. Uh, it is really, truly a community. All the former players that are still engaged. We've got the golf outing, which I, I understand. Are you coming back for? I'm back, and I have a powerhouse, an absolute powerhouse. So check out this squad. Mosey Thompson, <laughs> boom. Jeff Bartell, and the big one, Stein 99, David Steinbrook. Mm -hmm. If that foursome can't win that title, then no one can. I mean, I'm yeah, coming you're after the quite a recruiter, Hugh. Yeah, the Wheatrick kid, I know he's good, but I'm coming for it, and I've got Stein. <laughs> well, we're hoping we – last year was the inaugural golf outing. It was so fun to have so many former Titans back, and and uh, so hopefully that 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 will go well again. And we are excited about this, this upcoming August season. August 26th, right? For anyone that hasn't signed up for the golf outing, August 26th, I think it's at Ironwood. It's a Friday. Yeah. It was a blast last year. So if you haven't signed up, um, you, you can find your way through the website and it's easy to sign up and we'd love to see you out there. Contact myself or, or Andy Etheridge. Uh, I, I, Andy has taken charge of that. That's his baby. He's done an incredible job with it. You know, you talk about this, the... Uh, the program being you know, on solid ground right now, even after uh, four four starters are gone, you know, Andy Etheridge has a lot to do with that. He's worked in incredibly hard uh, in the recruiting trail. Uh, and then just having um, him in the office every day certainly has allowed us to do more things than we were able to do uh, before. So very excited about, he has a lot to do with that and want to make sure that he gets the credit he deserves and, it's going to be a great trip and excited for a, another Titan season coming up and really appreciate everyone who supports the program. Yeah. And huge shouts to coach Andy for everything that he, he has done. I mean, he's making a huge impact. It's awesome 
that you've got a full-time guy now for years and years. You didn't, you, you, you have had that for a few years and it's been great for you and the program. Andy's done awesome. Well, Ron, thank you so much for the time. I know uh, your favorite thing to do is coming up in 15 minutes. Practice, right? At, at 11 a.m., uh, the Titans will practice, correct? You, you'll like this. Yes. Yeah, we're going through a little walkthrough at 11. So two days ago, um, uh, I don't have my watch on, didn't bring my phone downstairs, and uh, look, kind of lost track of time in practice. I could have sworn we'd only been there an hour, hour and a half. We were there a lot longer, and our guys were talking about uh, putting their money together and buying me a watch. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been practicing? This, I've got this, you know, we, we end up going, well, I, I'm going to stay two and a half. They're going to stay three. I don't know. It, <laughs> give or take. And uh, I, I literally lost track of time. It was so much fun being out there working with the guys again. And uh, so, yeah, they, they were talking about, Hey, we need to, we need to get coach a watch so he doesn't lose track of time. But <laughs> I, I really do enjoy working with our guys and, uh, uh, yeah, next hour is gonna be gonna be a lot of fun. So, God Good luck. appreciate I'll, having me on, Q. I'll be I'll be looking for some of the tweets from the 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 uh, the program website again. I I look deeper than the surface. I'm looking at things and but like for example, I zoomed in. There was some Bryce Punk A is throwing a ball off the backboard. He's trying to dunk it, which he almost did, but I didn't call it a dunk. But really, the story in the background at that little side basket, there's Cody Mitchell. I want to know man bun or no man bun. <laughs> he had a headband. He did not have a man bun. These are the things that I look for, not the average fan. Those to me are the important things. So Cody's <laughs> looking good. Headband, but he, correct. He does not have the man bun, right? He has not. He has not brought out the man bun that I've seen. No. There's still no. time, and I will continue to to Inside lobby for edition. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ron. Thank you. That was QCast season two, episode twenty-two. Ron Rose moves into a tie for the most QCast appearances ever with the Wheaton head coach, Mike Schauer. Ron, thanks so much. Have a great trip to Greece and go Titans. Sounds great. Thank you, Q.